This summer I was generously contacted by one of my viewers about building a project that he wanted. This guy came out of the blue from directly on the other side of the world. And from that interaction, that day, I was presented with a very serendipitous uh, adventure. You know, there was really uh, a lot of different components that came together perfectly to make a model that is really turning out to be uh, one of the best I've ever built. And also the story behind it is one of the most, uh, I'm just appreciating every second of it. Now my client is from Australia and he has documented his travels in China over the years. And the location photos that we have in this video and in future videos are all his. Before we get into the building of the model or the designing of how we're going to build the model, all that jazz. Some notes from the client about the project are this. Steam is still active in some parts of China. However, it is dying real fast. There's only a few spots left and they are literally thousands of kilometers away from each other. The shed we are building is from a place in Lu Jiaxi. Uh, I'm trying to say the name, but I don't know if I can say it. He visited there twice, once in 2006 during Steam and again in 2014, about six years ago after Steam had finished. In fact, it seems even the diesels are gone now too, with the line looking like it's on its deathbed. Lu Jiaxi is a is in the northwest of China and even though I'm modeling the south southern areas this building is very common type and more importantly the brick color is the same as what's found in that area orange brick and lush vegetation beautiful stuff in these notes from clients I find the insights into the what the mo what the you know what's in his mind you know and it helps me to uh, advance my idea of what the client wants mainline steam finished in 1999 however there was many industrial lines and factories still hanging on as it was cheap and parts were easy then the purge came in 2008 the Olympics to scrap as many as possible but still some places held on. I've been visiting the remaining centers since 2000. The engine shed pics I sent you are actually taken up from all over China. The ones with orange diesels which I actually do have a great interest in was actually taken less than a year ago. Offline we had many conversations about the project. And in short, what he wanted was the features of these yellow brick buildings built with the red brick in the south that he loves so much. After a couple of weeks of deciding how to design the kit with my local laser company, don't be afraid to contact your craftsman kit creator, especially if he is local to get yourself some custom cut brick panels or parts for your custom cut kit. You know, it really takes a model to the uh, the best possible, it, can, it just makes it the best possible model that you can make it. And usually you'll find a down to earth uh, cottage industry supplier who just wants to pay off his laser and he's not gonna, give you a big gouge he's gonna give you a great price because he wants you to come back again so don't be afraid to check out those local kit creators to see if they are down to earth good luck <laughs> i have been sharing my scale modeling experiences on youtube free of charge for over two years now in that time, I've invested a lot of time and money into this project. Projects like these need funding to grow. 
And I'm asking for your help. Patreon.com slash Ron Perry. After going over the documents that the client made describing the project, well, I was able to move forward with my part of the whole project. Now, considering that this whole project is going to be shipped to Australia, that has to be put into uh, the plan too. So I decided to make a solid base uh, for this engine house so that when it ships, it's a solid structure and it can easily be padded with uh, uh, foam and various things, but also, you know, it's not fragile, it's strong. That's another reason for working with your local kit company is because you can actually do certain things to make it strong. And this is a brick building, like, there's no reason why it can't. I'm not really comfortable using this thing yet. Number two, it's real easy to, ah, uh, build from a solid base and uh, earlier I mentioned that a serendip this was a serendipitous adventure and the reason for this is is I would have never been able to cut this base like this without my friend Sparky 107 107 I sure hope I got his name right I get <laughs> uh, Sparky uh, helped me out by looking through my wish list on Amazon and found out that I wanted a, a table saw, a mini table saw, and purchased it for me. Thank you very much, Sparky. I put it to use on this project right away, and uh, I still have all my fingers. And hey, remember, shop safety is your responsibility. If you fail, you get hurt. Now, I was giving these dimensions on a little plan from the client and was able to cut out these pieces fairly quickly to make my base. Making the base, I really didn't have a game plan artistically of how I was going to finish the floor. And historically, I have a habit of being a little bit more rough around the edges than the average bear. Uh, instead of cutting straight lines with a razor and a ruler, sometimes I just go in with a razor saw and just start hacking away, trying to get the lines that I'm looking for. It works for me in two ways. Number one, it's my style. It's just the way I am. And number two, it gives my models uh, that sense of uh, chaos that I'm looking for. Uh, you know, if it doesn't work right away, you know, uh, start shaving a few flakes off the edges and, you know, maybe it will start to work. Going into this model, sure. Uh, I wanted to make a hard shell base for the model, but uh, other than the spacing of the rails on the the engine bays, we'll call them engine bays. <laughs> uh, I don't know as how to say that in Chinese. Don't even ask me. Uh, but uh, you know that was all very easy and I just flew through it because uh, it was color you know in the end of this uh, base what we're looking for is a lot of uh, concrete we're looking for a lot of grime uh, we're looking for uh, some uh, degraded concrete you know uh, you know all kinds of uh, uh, nice dull gray colors and, uh, you know, that's what I'm looking for in this first stage. Nothing more. 
So here is the model as it stands at this moment. Uh, I haven't finished uh, it in any way whatsoever. Uh, you can see the lines that have been cut into the model from the razor saw. And you know, I also uh, used uh, a number 11 razor blade to cut some cracks into the uh, concrete too. Then I came back with a, my sanding block and started sanding off the top edges uh, because using this MDF style board, uh, adding moisture to it after cutting into it, well, you know, it starts to wafer up on you. And, uh, you know, it's, it is actually realistic to, to sand down those edges. I also used a bit of uh, my steel wool and vinegar and uh, to see what kind of effect it would have. I wanted to have some uh, very solid uh, colors go into the wood and uh, you know I wanted those things to really stain the wood as opposed to be a paint so that when I come back with some paint it really is a substantial color in the mix. Uh, so I used some of that. I also used some MIG uh, washes, the brown, uh, in the lower bays. Uh, so uh, that's today's video. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, it's been a, it, it, it's a, it actually is a lot of fun doing this YouTube thing uh, every once in a while. <laughs> So uh, if you appreciate these videos, please consider uh, pressing the like button down there. If you want to see another one, press the subscribe. If you want to be notified of a video, press the little bell over here. And if you really want to send me a tip, show your appreciation, go to patreon.com slash Ron Perry. Thanks for watching.